So, you want to know which armor piercing weapon works best? Well, I do too. So today, we're going to be testing them out and seeing which one works best on the heavily armored targets like the Charger and the Bile Titan. So let's get right into it. Alright, so first up, we have the anti-material rifle here. This is going to be the first one you have access to as far as armor penetrating weapons go, and this is going to be the earliest level one. Now, I'm not expecting this to really do much damage to the Bile Titan itself, because they do only have a couple of small little soft weak points. Because this, uh, this gun actually can't penetrate the armor, it bounces off and ricochets, so that's not going to be a very viable option in that case. But, the question would be, can you take down the Bile Titan just shooting its little soft spots underneath, which is those little green areas? So we're going to go ahead and test that. Alright, so here is our Bile Titan here. So this weapon is meant for kind of more long range targets. So there's a soft spot right there. That should have been a soft spot hit as well. Got the charger getting in the way. Oh, and there comes the charger again. back it up a little bit you might need more might need more space so with this gun it's meant to be used in long range just because it is it is more of a sniper and so it is meant to be kind of used in more of a long range situation so solo play is going to be a lot harder to use this weapon efficiently because well you know you're going to need more space you're going to need more time to prep your shot this does require a little bit more precision so Getting off the actual shots themselves is going to be a little bit more difficult when you're playing solo. So we're almost through half of our mag here, and we've been hitting mostly soft spots, and this hasn't really done too much to this guy. It hasn't really slowed him down much. Uh, most of our shots have landed on a soft spot. We've gotten a couple of ricochets, but for the most part, most of our target has been hit. Okay, we're completely out of ammo with this thing, and we were not able to take him down. Granted, we did get a few ricochets, to be fair, but, I mean, if we're being honest, six clips is not a great use case um, for a Bile Titan, because that is a lot of ammo, that's a lot of time running around. So, realistically, is this viable for a Bile Titan? Probably not. Could it be done? Probably. But, I mean, it would take a lot more time than you're gonna want, especially in a tight situation. So, would I recommend the recoilless rifle for a bile titan absolutely not next we've got the anti-material rifle against a charger here um now this probably isn't going to be the best shot but there we go i think that hit him but this is technically supposed to be more of a long range weapon of course you can use it in close range but it is going to be more effective at long range you're going to have more time to deal with targets so that's deflecting right off but if you hit him right in the front there Kind of right underneath you can actually hit that guy so you can't go through the direct armor but you can still hit him in the little squishy spot as long as you aim it right so on a charger this seems to be a lot more effective than it does on a bile titan Alright, we're on our last mag here, and this is a fresh rifle as well, so it did have full ammo. Okay, so we just took him down, but that took most of our ammo still. So, we got some pretty good hits in initially, but um, it took us a little bit longer to get to the backside, and we did have a few enemies on us, which in a real situation that would be the case. So, honestly, can it take down the charger? Yes. Is it very viable, especially at higher ranks? Probably not. I would say overall the anti-material rifle is definitely more of a team weapon um, to get the most use out of it. I wouldn't suggest this for solo play, as it seems like it's going to be a lot harder to land those shots. And it takes quite a lot, especially if you can't hit them in really vital points. So this can be usable, but is it very viable? Not really. Next, we have the EAT-17. So this is going to be the expendable weapon where you shoot it one time and it is done. So we're going to try this out on our friend, the Charger over here, who has decided to have a fun time. Oh, he's running real fast. Oh, man. Okay. Um, so yeah, we're going to try this out on our friend here. So we've got our EAT-17 here. So a frontal attack, I'm out. you can hit him in the front. Will it do damage? Yes, absolutely. So a frontal attack through the armor is viable with the EAT-17. 
So that is definitely good to know, as most times you won't really have a lot of time to get their exposed spots. So that's really good. That's a mark for the expendable anti-tank titan right off. Um, can it take him down in two, though? So that was pretty much a direct impact hit to the front. Two of them. Did it take him down? Not quite. Is he bleeding out? He may die from that. Um, so it is possible to probably take them out in two, as long as you kind of let him just kind of bleed out and, and take the hits. But instantly down after two, it doesn't seem like is the case, unless you get pretty solid shots. Like, I think that took him down just now. Oh, no, he hit something. Um, but yeah, so... E-17s, they're not bad. They can penetrate the armor for sure. But at this point, he's, like I said, still bleeding out. So it didn't quite kill him. Now, they don't have a terribly long cooldown. They only have 70 seconds. So it's not the worst cooldown. But you only get two shots. And if you miss those, especially in tight situations, it's going to be a lot harder to really give yourself the necessary time to recover. So here's another one here. Okay, so three to finish him off. He probably would have bled out with two, but it seems like three is kind of a, a probably a common number that's gonna you're gonna see, especially when you're getting chased by multiple enemies. You're not gonna have the perfect shot lined up, that kind of thing. So as far as the ant, the eat, it is more effective than the anti materia rifle so far. Um, you're able to take them out much more effectively as far as that goes. So I would say definitely an improvement obviously you know it is a it is an actual launcher so that makes sense but um they are both anti-armor to a degree um the anti-material rifle is a little bit more on the lighter side whereas this is going to be a little bit more on the heavy side of armor piercing but as far as all anti-armor weapons go the eat is definitely over the anti-material so far okay so we've got our e17 and we've got a bile titan this is our next target that we're trying to shoot here that was a full frontal attack so that looks like it did some pretty good damage to him. We're going to try another one, because that was one. So they only have one shot, unfortunately. So we've got our second shot here. Let's see how this does. Full frontal hit. Okay, so two eats to the face of a Bile Titan will do the job. So it's pretty viable, to be honest. As far as an anti-tank weapon, it's very doable. Um, I, I believe the face is a pretty good weak point, as that would take them out pretty quick. You could also hit them in the butt. Uh, they're a little, like, exposed thorax um, type of deal. But I believe after that's exploded, they still usually don't die, at least in my experience. So I would aim for more of the head, just because once that's blasted off, you're still going to hit the target itself. So it's going to do more damage effectively that way, at least in my experience so far. So I'd say the E is very qualified to take down chargers, and it's very qualified to take down bile titans. On the topic of launchers, we have the recoilless rifle next, which is an explosive launcher. This is the next one we're going to be testing out, just to see if it's on par with the EAT-17. I imagine it's going to be a similar experience, um, but the only difference between the two of them is the EAT-17s are expendable, so once you shoot, you can just toss it, no need to reload, and you can pick up another one and do the same thing. So. That is an advantage with the recoilless rifle, or with the E17 over the recoilless rifle, is especially in solo play, you have to reload the recoilless rifle, which takes time, and the E17 you can just dispose of after a shot. So we have our recoilless rifle here and our friend the Bile Titan, which we're going to test this out on. Let's get his attention. And then we'll do a front shot when he has the availability right now. That was not a bad shot. Got to get out of the way of that reload so like i said earlier the eat 17 is going to be a little bit better just because you don't necessarily have to reload it um so you can just shoot and then dispose of which is going to be a lot better in single player use cases so this is going to be the second shot right on the head okay so so far it seems a little less effective than the eat 17 because the eat 17 was able to take him down in two frontal face shots with two bullets um, and this one so far was not able to do so. It looks like it did mostly similar damage, but it's just a little bit less and isn't taking him down. Alright, so that was the third shot to the head. Took him down. So it seems like that's going to be the case for the recoilless rifle, at least in the front. Um, typically, if you shoot their back, their little thorax thing on the back, I believe is what that's called, um, it blows up and then you can't shoot it anymore. So it's not going to be able to do extra damage. They will maybe bleed out from that. But it's not very viable, especially when you're getting chased down by a crowd and him at the same exact time. So it's not exactly the best option. So frontal face hits with these kinds of weapons is going to be the best. Uh, if you have something like the anti-material rifle, that might be a little bit better. But uh, again, the anti-material rifle is pretty low on the list. So not exactly the best option here so far. 
As far as Bio Titans go, looks like three shots is going to do it for the recoilless rifle, which in this case in solo is going to take a lot of time and it's not going to be very good for you. You're going to die a lot probably using this and it's going to be a lot better if you actually play in co-op. So as far as solo play, I wouldn't recommend this over the E17. I would say the E17 tops this one specifically. And if you're playing in co-op, this one probably would be the better choice just because you can fire off more rounds faster with the support back. This is going to be our next target here. Okay. Well, we got off one shot. I feel like that was a pretty decent shot to the front. I mean, it looks like it did a little bit more damage to the actual arm than it did to the face. But in a tight situation, you're not always going to get the perfect shot. So as far as that goes, this is kind of what we're testing here, just to see which one's going to be most viable. Again, we're going to have to reload this, and these guys are very, very aggressive. So it's going to be a lot harder to be able to get off a reload in the middle of a battle. This guy should be able to turn around here and get hit by this. There we go. Okay, let's get out of this. Perfect, that was a great shot. Now granted, we did have the EMS going on, so that was a perfect scenario where we could get a perfect shot on him. Again, that's not always going to happen. And more often than not, you're going to be hitting the arms or you're going to be getting hit by other targets. And so actually hitting this guy directly on like that is going to be a little bit harder to do. Now, I will say this guy is bleeding out after two shots, so it will take some time, but he most likely will eventually die if we just leave him alone. But a lot of times you're going to get hit and it's not going to be very good. So we're going to want to hit him with that third shot and that took him down. So three shots to the front armor, which is the highest point of armor, takes him down with the recoilless rifle. Now, E17 seems like it's going to be a similar use case. So as far as chargers go, there's not really too much of a difference. Again, the reload time is really going to not be your best friend solo. So you're going to want to use this in co-op if you're going to use it for the bigger targets, most likely as solo. It's not going to be the best choice. So if you're going to use any launcher of this type, I would recommend an E17 overall for most efficiency. But if you're really keen on the team reload, then the recoilless rifle will probably be a better choice for you, as you can get quite a lot more rounds off in team reload. Next up, we have our railgun. Now, this one I really enjoy using only because it doesn't really need like a supply pack or a support pack to reload. You just get the ammo that you get. Now, one negative about this is that it only starts out with 10 rounds unless you have the upgrade, in which case you'll get the 20. It also has an unsafe mode and a safe mode. In my testing, I haven't noticed a difference between the two. I imagine unsafe is supposed to make it do more damage, but for me, I haven't noticed that difference. So we're just going to keep it on safe mode for now. We got our friend the Charger here to test this out on. And we're going to see how many shots directly to the main part of the armor, which is the face point, um, this actually takes to take this guy out. So we got one good shot there. There's two. There's three. There's four. And there's five. So in my testing, it seems like five is a pretty consistent amount directly to the face. Now, one thing I will say is that the railgun and the recoilless rifle specifically, going for the arms is going to be the better choice. So you take out the arms, and then after the arm armor is off, then you just shoot them with your primary weapon. That is going to be the best use case for these, you know, as far as taking out armor on chargers. But in terms of just pure armor penetration, I would say so far the E17 is best for chargers just because it can take them out in two shots and that's directly in the face which is the heaviest part of the armor so for charges i would say eat 17 is best if you're going for pure armor takedown but if you're going for arm takedown and convenience i would say railgun and recoilless rifle are going to do the job just as well uh recoilless rifle being at the bottom of that list only because you do have to reload it but they are very viable so as far as the list goes i would say the recoilless rifle is the bottom the railgun is next up, and the best for the chargers so far is going to be the E17. So the next up, we have a Bile Titan with the railgun. Now, this one's a little bit more inconsistent. Sometimes I've been able to take out Bile Titans with one shot. Sometimes it takes 20. So I'm hitting him directly in his armor. He took that shot. This will be a third shot. Okay, so three shots directly to the faceplate armor. That's four shots, five shots. Six shots. This will be this will be nine shots now. Ten. And this is all directly to the face, which is generally the hardest part of the armor. There's eleven, or there's twelve. Thirteen. 
There we go. So 14 shots on that one. Like I said, sometimes I've been able to get that in one shot. Sometimes it's two. Sometimes it's 20. It just really depends. So as far as the as far as, far as the rail gun goes, it's pretty inconsistent in terms of like the gun itself, and it's not the best on Bile Titans as far as consistency goes. So for Bile Titans, I would say so far in terms of use case, I would say the E17 is probably the best as I believe we got that guy down in two shots with the E17. So overall, for both chargers and for Bile Titans, E17 is looking like the most efficient as far as weapons go. I do prefer the railgun just because you can take out a lot of the other armored targets quicker as well. But as far as Bile Titans right now, like I said, I don't know if it's meant to be inconsistent or not like that. But as far as the unsafe mode and the safe mode, I haven't noticed a difference with the damage. So as far as that goes, I would say inconsistency wise, that's going to be better for the Bile Titans as far as weapons go. Next up, we have our spear. This is going to be a level 20 weapon. Um, so this is going to be something you get quite a bit later. We have our target over there, which is going to be your charger. Now this weapon does need a lock on in order to actually work. And so you're gonna have to kind of plan this out as far as when you're shooting it. There we go, there's two shots. And it took him down. So two shots and this takes down a charger. So if you can get the advantage on them and they don't see you, it's gonna be really easy to take them down. But if you don't, then you're going to have a little bit of a hard time, especially if you're not playing in a team scenario, because you do have to reload this and it does take quite some time to do so. So in that case, I would say it's on par with the 817 in terms of damage. But as far as use case, it's going to be a lot harder to do solo than it is to be in a group. So uh, either is going to work in a group or in solo. But as far as convenience, I would say the 817 takes the spot for convenience just because you don't have to reload it and you can grab the second one and take them out pretty quickly. So as far as that goes, I would say the 817 wins in terms of power and convenience in terms of taking down charge. So here we have a Bile Titan. This is the next target for our spear here. There's one shot. We do have to reload. This takes quite a bit of time. Let's see. We can get enough another one. Let's see. Oh, we got a charger, which is taking priority, unfortunately. There we go. There's two shots. Okay, so it didn't take him down in two shots. Now, the thing about the spear that's bad is that you can't exactly control where it goes. It just locks on, and then it tries to shoot as best as it can as close to the target as possible. But you can't exactly control where this goes. So that is one negative about the spear. It can shoot faster, which in co-op um, with the uh, assisted reload. But again, that's only with the assisted reload. As far as the single use case so far, it's a lot more difficult to get the target where you need it, get the hits in and actually take them down. So, so far two shots again, cause you can't really control where this actually goes. So you may get lucky and, and hit a vital spot within those two shots and take it down. But more often than not, you're, you're going to probably need three shots with the spear. So we'll see if this takes it down, which it should. Go ahead and let this guy hit this guy. There we go. Perfect. Those guys can tear off the other armor, which is nice. Okay. Come on, there you go. Okay, so this is going to be the third shot here. Boom. Okay, three shots for a javelin, or for the spear. Not the best use case as far as things go. I wouldn't say the spear is best overall, because it takes a quite a long time to reload, just like the recoilless rifle, and it still takes three shots. So I would say in those terms, the recoilless rifle and the spear are on equal footing, but the spear does have an advantage in the way that it can shoot at much longer ranges than the recoilless rifle with lock-on accuracy. So that is definitely an advantage. So I would say in terms of power, javelin or the spear is going to be more powerful than the recoilless rifle um so it's equal in terms of damage but it's better in terms of use case and quality of life as far as that goes my ultimate list as far as all the weapons go is going to be the top is the e17 which is the expendable launcher where after one shot you throw it away and you can pick up another one it's convenient and you can use it in single player very effectively uh, the second would have to be the railgun, just because it has convenience. It only has it has 20 rounds, and you don't have to have a support backpack to reload it. So that's very useful. It does have to reload in between each shot, but I would say that's pretty convenient and still considering. But next below that, I would have to say the javelin or the spear goes for that third spot, and then the recoilless rifle takes the fourth spot, and the anti-material rifle takes the last place, which I figured it would, but 
yeah, that's my list as far as the best armor penetrating weapons on all of the current monsters in the game or current big armored bugs as far as that goes. Uh, again, if we do well in this video and you guys did like this, we can do some for automatons as well. But as far as testing goes, it looks like the overall winner is going to be the 817. So there you have it. Thank you guys so much for watching. I appreciate you guys doing that, and I appreciate you being here. Again, if you like that video, please go ahead and give it a like and subscribe for more stuff like this. And if you guys have any ideas or things I might have missed, uh, go ahead and leave it in the comments below. I'd love to hear you guys' opinion on what you like best. I personally like the railgun, but in terms of use case, the E17 seems to triumph here.